Good day, bonjour, diet da, bula, guten tag, aslam. Assalamu alaikum, welcome. This is Ms. Sitiksha Kabra, a team member of Kash Foundation and one of your quiz masters for this evening. Let's begin today's session with the words of Branch Raiki. And I quote, it is not the honor that you take with you, but the heritage you leave behind, unquote. On this note, we warmly welcome each one of you to the Coach A Darohar, an international quiz competition on the UNESCO World Heritage Sites of South Countries, organized by Kash Foundation's Center of Academic and Professional Development under its Heritage Vertical as part of the World Heritage Week. The Heritage Week is being celebrated from 19th November 2020 to 25th November 2020 by Kash Foundation's Center of Academic and Professional Development in collaboration with Ministry of Culture, Government of India, Department of Tourism, Government of Maharashtra, Archaeological Survey of India, Government of India, Swami Vivek Anand Cultural Center, High Commission of India, Colombo, Sri Lanka, World Buddhist Mission Japan and Department of Archaeology and Ancient History, the Maharaj Sayaji Rao University of Baroda. The inaugural session for the World Heritage Week 2020 was conducted on 19th November 2020. And the guest of honor and our keynote speaker for this session was Sri Aditya Thakari, Honorable Minister of Tourism, Environment and Protocol, Government of Maharashtra, India. Sri Pralhad Singh Patel, Honorable Union Minister of State for Cultural and Tourism, Government of India, was the chief guest for this session. The inaugural session was also graced by a special guest, which included Dr. Revant Vikram Singh, Dr. Nandini Bhattacharya Sahu, Mr. Bhaskar Natrajan, Reverend Medha Medhankar, Mr. Ashwini Sakena, and Dr. Afkar Chadhav. On 20th November 2020, we have the 9th International Symposium on Heritage, which was graced, graced by some of the most eminent scholars on heritage, which included Dr. Esther Schmidt, architect Frank Schlittmann, Ms. Bindu, Ms. Bindu and Mr. Alishar Begmato. The third day of the Heritage Week was dedicated to celebrate our intangible cultural heritage with Virasat. Wherein we had Dr. Jayashi Raja Gopalan, who is the director of Nrityodaya, the Academy of Performing Arts Mumbai, as the keynote speaker. Virasat was an evening filled with exemplary performances of Bhoshambo, Bharatnatyam, Bharatnityam, Carnatic music, Kathak, etc., and a wonderful film documentary presented by Kathak. Virasat was organized on 21st November 2020. Continuing the enthusiasm of the World Heritage Week yesterday, that is 22nd November 2020, a, mod a model UNESCO Youth Summit to discuss and deliberate on our tangible and intangible cultural heritage was organized. Since its inception, Center for, Center for Academic and Professional Development has successfully organized nine international conferences, a model UNESCO Youth Summit and three faculty development programs. Apart from this, Kash Foundation's Kash Swasthya Manthan has organized 17 health webinars on naturopathy, Ayurveda, immunity levels, and mental health, etc. With this, I would take this opportunity to once again welcome you all to the fifth day of the World Heritage Week celebrations. For the ones who have joined in late, this is Ms. Diksha Kabra, a team member of Kash Foundation and one of your quiz masters. Now, I would like to give a brief introduction about today's event. Khoj A. Darohar. Khoj A. Darohar is an international quiz competition organized to help students holistically study the UNESCO World Heritage Sites of SARC countries. The competition will be conducted in three rounds. The details regarding each round will be given later on. With this, I would like to invite Dr. Afkar Jadav, founder trustee of Kash Foundation and director of Center for Academic and Professional Development to encourage the participants and share his thoughts with us. So, over to you. Thank you, uh, Pratiksha, for that wonderful lineup which you, in fact, gave us sight of all the four days of uh, deliberation which we had. Kash Foundation is a Mumbai-based NGO registered trust 
which works on education, environment, health and heritage. Heritage has been one cause which we are quite closely connected to. Because we strongly believe heritage requires utmost care, preservation, conservation. Heritage is not merely structures. Heritage is not merely monument. Heritage, if at all you listen to them, they speak to you. They convey a certain message. If you try to connect to them, you'll realize that there is some essence with which you would be connected to them in a manner where you will go for your own self-search. Search of your roots, identity, culture. That is the reason why we look at heritage as a very vital pillar, cannot really be futuristic, cannot really be progressive. And taking this ideas, we thought of having our World Heritage Week. And interestingly, UNESCO also appreciated these efforts. And we are looking forward to have many more such events where we'll get uh, activist academicians, people from corporate industry, students, youth, who would participate, engage, deliberate, discuss. And we'll try to come out with some resolutions where we would collectively find out ways how we can spread more and more awareness about our assets and as well as how we can contribute in protecting. As per the Indian Constitution, Article 51A, if at all you see, it is our fundamental duty to protect, preserve our heritage, our monuments. On the fifth day of World Heritage Week, I am quite glad to introduce to you our keynote speaker, Mr. Rajesh Kamath, person with not only versatile areas of expertise, but of course, person who wants to explore more. And his entire attitude is, there is a lot to learn and there is a lot to give. We also have today with us for the valedictory session, Dr. Rashmi Jeta, who has also worked on one of the heritage structures in India, Khajurao. And he will be giving us his insight on his experience when he was working on Khajurao for his documentary. So on behalf of Kash Foundation, I welcome our panelists for the day. And I also welcome the youth brigade, people, students, the youth who would like to participate and who will be participating today. I wish them all the best for the quiz and I'm sure the questions will take you to the odyssey of all the heritage structures which we have in the SAR countries, right from Sri Lanka, Nepal, Bhutan, Maldives, Afghanistan, India. So I wish you all the best for the competition. And I once again welcome both our panelists for the day. Over to you, Ditiksha. Thank you, Dr. Afkar Jadav, sir, for sharing your views with us and for encouraging our participants. Now, without taking much of your time, I would like to invite our keynote speaker for this evening, Mr. Rajesh Kamath, founder of Chanakya Consulting Insights, co-founder or co-facilitator MTHR Global and MTHR Global CXO Forum India. Mr. Rajesh Kamath is a keynote speaker, storyteller, consultant, facilitator, columnist, teacher, coach and lifelong learner. His purpose is to apply principles from eternal global wisdom to modern organizations. He is known for combining the best of Western and Indian management science to provide leadership consulting, coaching and learning solutions to the industry. After 20 years in leading organizations and consulting firms, he started his own venture, Chanakya Consulting Insights. Through this enterprise, he has helped transform organizations in diverse industry segments through the integration and adaption of timeless principles from Indian wisdom. His thought, leadership is helping hundreds of managers to reinvent themselves, inculcate, in, inculcating the eternal wisdom of India and the world. 
Mr. Rajesh Kamath has expertise in building communities. He co-founded More Than HR Global, MTHR RG in 2002 and the MTHR Global CXO community, the only one of its kind which is growing rapidly across India. He also founded Living Philosophy Study Group, LPSG, which helps Indians learn Indian philosophy in an engaging manner. And today he will be enlightening us with his thoughts on leadership wisdom of eternal India. Sir, over to you. Namaste. Thank you so much, uh, Titiksha. Thank you also, Dr. Aukash Jadav, and uh, my namaskars also to Dr. Rashmi Jeta. Uh, friends, I want to first of all congratulate all of you for being part of uh, World Heritage Week. and what a phenomenal job is happening through kash foundation so kudos and congratulations to all i'm going to request uh, pamela to please uh, have the slides while i am uh, still on my introduction so so beautifully said by dr jadav he said heritage is not architecture heritage are not monuments heritage is everything that speaks to you and one of the things that speaks to me and should speak to all of us is the leadership wisdom of eternal india so according to me the greatest heritage that india bharat has is its leadership and i'm just going to speak about two or three things today because that's all the time that we have i want to remind you that bharat as it as it exists today was not so before the 3rd century bc before 300 bc but it was created by a man or championed by a person under whose tutelage chandragupta maurya united most of the kingdoms around 16 mahajanpad as they were called into what is called as akhanda bharat you can go to the next slide please uh, pamela the name of that gentleman when he was born was vishnugupt as named by his parents being the son of a teacher called chanak was chanakya and being of a gotra called kautil he was called kautilya and he had a singular vision and purpose of creating a khanda that means an undivided bharat for india as we know it there is a huge difference between the words bharat and india and you friends who know about the heritage should know that bharat <coughs> i'm sorry bharat is a far more superior term because it has the vision of bharat in it which is of knowledge India is a geographic term. Could you please go to the next slide? So one of the greatest things that Chanakya did was he identified who is the right talent to become the first king of Akhanda Bharat, and who is not. So though he was born in the kingdom of Magar. and more specifically partly because he realized that dhananan of the nanda dynasty then had become a ruler who was intoxicated by power and was no longer suitable to lead the united india and hence he identified a young boy who by most counts wasn't even of royal blood but very very capable to become leader that young boy was a boy called chandragupt maurya whose leadership he tested several times before he taught him and nurtured him took him to takshashila all about heritage right and nurtured him to become the king yeah please go to the previous slide uh, just 2 minutes more and that man became the first king but what i want you to also know yes next slide please is that 
what did he accomplish and how did he accomplish the great heritage of india is about buddhi and calling it intelligence or intellect is not enough because buddhi has a lot more there's another term called pratnya which is a lot more it's about wisdom it's about intelligence it's about mental power all this came together to defeat who was the greatest conqueror of those times not leader who was called alexander how was he defeated is unimportant what's important is that he was frustrated in his efforts and he marched back from only one country he had conquered half the world but he could not march ahead in bharat because chandragupta maurya led by chanakya applied their buddhi their mindset their thoughts their intelligence their wisdom to defeat the efforts of alexander after chandragupta maurya became king for about 150 years i'm sure you know it better the maurya dynasty ruled and very importantly the grandson of chandragupta maurya ashok became india's first global emperor and what a heritage because the legacy of this king is right there in the center of the national flag of bharat the ashok chakra chanakya's other legacy which you must study as students dear friends is kautilya's arthashastra we know some little bit about chanakya niti but chanakya niti was written for the commoners whereas arthashastra was written for leaders you and me next please one of the leaders who studied the four aspects of leadership which are e a s t energy qualities attitude skills and traits traits are inherent that which is human nature that which is natural to that individual was none other than next slide please chatrapati shivaji maharaj and chatrapati shivaji maharaj as you know is one of the greatest leaders which the world has ever seen in historic times because you can imagine that india was ruled by not one but five invaders and these five invaders the greatest of whom or rather the most powerful whom a powerful of whom were the moguls were given the toughest challenge by shivaji raje just go to the previous slide i just want to give you a snapshot we don't have time to study these chanakya has given something called swami sampat which are the excellences of the leader which are 51 in number i'm only showing you a few for you to look at of how shivaji raje who studied the arthashastra develop these qualities within himself such a powerful leader each of you must study in great detail and study his leadership not just the history next please and the next after that so i'm going to now close next please close with a story and next uh, sorry previous previous one please brinmay yes hold i want you to go on the tenali ram slide please i think you click twice yes now hold here so one of the most intelligent people of the 14th century that bharat has known was a person whom we have read about but probably we don't know sufficiently that he had such great buddhi such great pratnya that person is called tenali ram tenali was the place where he was born and raised but ramakrishna which was his full name went on to become one of the ministers not court jester please get your history right a minister one of the ashtadiggaj in the court of krishnadev rai 
who created or rather helped Vijayanagara empire flourish. One of the greatest empires of Bharat. So I am going to share a very short story of Tenaliram. Once upon a time, in the court of Krishna Dev Rai, Vijay Bhuvana as it was called, some Arab traders came with some fantastic horses. Arabia was known for that. And all the ministers started purchasing those horses, thinking that they are the finest in the world. Everyone purchased horses, even the king purchased 100 for his stable. But Tenali Ram did not make any purchase, nor was he even impressed. So everyone said, are you not going to buy? He said, no, I don't think there is a need. Horses of Vijayanagara are better. They said, are you crazy? He said, no, I can prove it. And so it was organized to have a race. One month later, between Tenali Ram's horse, which was of a local breed, versus the horses of the other ministers, which were all from Arabia. As you can imagine, all the other ministers spent a lot of time in giving the most fantastic diet to, for their horses, to have jockeys, have trainers and so on. Tenali Ram did the exact opposite. He fed his horse only half of what he normally fed it. And no trainer and nothing else. When the day of the race arrived, the horse of Tenali Ram looked very thin. Everybody else's horse looked healthy. All of them were looking at Tenali Ram with a very sarcastic look. And as if to say your horse is going to lose very poorly today. Then just before the whistle was blown for the horse to start, Tenali Ram who had a cloth bag next to the saddle, put his hand into it and he took out a bundle of lush green grass. Tied it to the end of a stick and he held that stick in front of the horse about a foot away. The moment the whistle was blown, the horse just ran because it wanted to grab that grass. He was underfed for a month, remember? But the grass could not be reached because it was on a stick which Tenali Ram held in his hand. The horse ran and ran and ran as if he was running for his life. The other horses ran at their best speed. But one who runs for their life outruns the one who raced to win. Tenali Ram won the race with the horse. And as soon as the race was completed, Tenali Ram embraced the horse and fed it completely. When finally the king <laughs> put the medal around Tenali Ram's uh, neck, and he asked him, how did your horse win so weak? Tenali Ram said, sir, it is not the horse that wins. It's the hunger that wins. Think about Tenali Ram and how, what he applied. So friends, I want to tell you as I close this um, uh, a keynote address that the legacy of India, the heritage of India, is also about buddhi. It's not about jumping onto the bandwagon and doing what everything everyone else does. All the ministers copied each other. Tenali Ram applied his buddhi, his pradnya, and did the exact opposite. So I wish you all the best and namaste. We have great teachers in India, great leaders like Jetaji, Aukash Jadav Jati, and of course all of you who are the future leaders of Bharat. Wish you all the best. You can go to the last slide, please. Here are my details. If you wish, I'm happy to interact with you on WhatsApp or mail. Yeah. Thank you so much. Danyavad. Thank you, Mr. Rajesh Kamat, sir, for sharing with us your beautiful insights. I'm sure our viewers and participants must have learned a lot from it.
not making you wait anymore ladies and gentlemen girls and boys participants and viewers teachers and students organizers and volunteers graduates and undergraduates tighten your seat belts and calm your nerves as i welcome you once again to board this flight of coach a darohar now now to all the participants it's finally time to commence with our coach a darohar i would request min mai to please get on the screen the rules and regulations for round 1 so let's just quickly go through all the necessary guidelines rules and regulations for round 1 rule 1 Fifteen multiple choice questions will be displayed on the screen. Rule two: the participant with the right answer has to spell out the answer according to the options given as soon as the question is displayed. Wrong spellings would not be considered. For example, in which country is Taj Mahal? Option A: India. B: Pakistan. C: Sri Lanka. D: Maldives. one cannot write option a a etc the participant has to type i n d i a india in the chat box rule 3 the one who answers first for a question on everyone chat only scores one point each question any answers sent to host or co-host will not be considered rule 5 a participant shall attempt all the questions in the round rule 6 30 seconds will be provided for answering the question which will begin only once the quiz master has read the question out aloud rule 7 the decisions of the organizers will be the final decision so these are all the rules to be kept in mind for round 1 after hearing all this you are all nervous aren't you Well don't worry you guys aren't alone I am nervous too but excitement is overpowering the nervousness isn't it so without taking any more of your time since you all are already clear with all your rules and regulations I would take this opportunity to Come on guys it's really easy you can answer 5 6 4 3 Two more, two more, five, nine, one more. Where is the last contestant? Ten. Come on, we are done with the thirty seconds. So, and the right answer for this question is Agra Fort. Agra Fort stands as the important sixteenth-century Mughal monument near the gardens of the Taj Mahal. This powerful fortress of red sandstone encompasses within its 2.5 km long enclosure walls the imperial city of the Mughal rulers. For the participants you all need to be quick. You never know when the other one takes the point away from you. It was just the first question. You have 14 more to go. Can I have the next question on the screen please? 2200 year old buddhist caves and shrines dedicated to lord buddha i am carved into a 250 foot high rock i stand decorated with murals and sculptures stories from jataka i show do you know as to what do i glow a elephant caves b kanheri caves c ajanta caves d rangiri dambula cave temple Your thirty seconds have already. Oh wow, we have the first answer already. Oh my God, what enthusiasm! Come on, guys. Fifteen seconds left. Okay, wow, we have such intelligent participants. I must say, five, four, three, two. One. Oh my God! And it is Ajanta Caves. Ajanta Caves is the first Buddhist cave monument at Ajanta, date from the second and first centuries BC. During the Gupta period, many more richly decorated caves were added to the original group. The paintings and sculptures of Ajanta, considered masterpieces of Buddhist religious art, have had a considerably artistic influence. 
That was an insight about Ajanta Caves. I hope you all are learning about it. Now, can we have the third question on screen? Attributed to King Narsimha Deva one dedicated to Lord Surya I am destroyed by Sultan Sikandar Butchi Khan in the state of Odisha I still stand who am I A Sun Temple at Konark B Great Living Chola Temples 13 C Mahabodhi Temple Complex D Golden Temple Okay wow I have questions before I finish the I have answers before I finish the question that's really interesting Guys, you need to move your fingers faster. The other one is snatching away the points from you. Only one gets a point for each question. You need to be faster. Five, four. Is anybody left? Two, one. That's it. Can we have have the right answer on the screen? And the answer is Sun Temple at Kunak, on the shores of the Bay of Bengal. Bathed in the rays of the rising sun, the temple at Konark is a monumental representation of the sun god Surya's chariot. Its twenty-four wheels are decorated with symbolic designs, and it is and it is led by a team of six horses. Built in the thirteenth century, it is one of India's most famous Brahman sanctuaries. I hope you all are learning some things. I am sure you all did not know about this. I uh, know this about sun table with this can we have the fourth question on screen located in the city of agra it took 15 years to build me constructed as a tribute to his favorite wife white marble is what gave me life who am i i have not even read the question then i have the answers a agra fort b qutub minar c fatehpur sikri d taj mahal Okay, wow! I already have answers from all the contestants. This is getting interesting and intense. Can we have the right answer on the screen? And it is Taj Mahal. Taj Mahal is an immense mausoleum of white marble built in Agra between 1631 and 1648 by order of the Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan in memory of his favorite wife. It is the jewel of Muslim art in India and one of the universally admired masterpieces of the world's heritage. And I already know, y'all know what Taj Mahal. Taj Mahal is so famous, right? We are all so attached to Taj Mahal. Can we have the fifth question on the screen? Founded by ruler Jai Singh II, tenth most populous city in the country, I am. A part of the West Golden Triangle tourist circuit, I form home to the UNESCO World Heritage sites of Amber Fort and Jantar Mantar. I am who am I? A. Jaipur City. B. Historic City of Ahmedabad. C. Jodhpur City. D. Udaipur City. Okay, wow! I have already got answers. Can you can you realize the competition? There is so much of competition. I don't know what to say. Wow, such so smart participants we have got. I am proud of my participants. After all, it's me who is the quiz master. The participants have to be strong, yeah. Okay, yeah. You know, now if quiz master is intelligent, the participants have to be intelligent. Can we have the right answer on the screen? And it is Jaipur City. For the ones who have answered Jodhpur, it is Jaipur City. Jaipur City, the walled city of Jaipur in India's northwestern state of Rajasthan, was founded in seventeen twenty-seven by Savai by Savai Jai Singh II. Unlike other cities in the re region located in hilly terrain, Jaipur was established on the architecture. Just to remind the participants, we are already done with five questions. That means it leaves us with ten questions only. For the ones whose fingers are a little slow, you all are missing out on your points. That means you will have to buck yourself up. So, with this, can we have the next question on the screen? The second capital of Sri Lanka, I was. 
the second most ancient of Sri Lanka's kingdoms I am. The Brahminical monuments built by the Cholas I comprise the monumental ruins of the fabulous garden city created by Parakrambu Van I consist. Who am I? A. Historic mosque city of Bagehar. B. Sacred city of Kandy. C. Sacred city of Anu. Anuradhapura, the ancient city of Kola Narua. Okay, okay, okay. I have answers coming. I can see the answers. Okay, can we have the right answer on screen? And the right answer is ancient city of Kola Narua. Ulanavruva was the second capital of Sri Lanka after the destruction of Anuradhapura in 1993. It comprises, besides the Brahminic monuments built by the Cholas, the monumental ruins of the fabulous garden city created by Parakrambahu I in the 12th century. I hope you all are having a learning experience. With this, can we have the next question? In the north, I share an international border with Kom Komalanguma National Nature Preserve of, of Tibet. In the east, I am adjacent to Makalau Baru National Park. In the south, I extend to Dud Kosi River and I am a part of the sacred Himalayan landscape. Who am I? A. Chitwan National Park P. B. Saganmatha National Park C. Bardia National Park D. Langtang National Park I've got four answers. I need more six answers. Guys, move. Make your brains work. Make your hands move faster. Okay, okay. Wow. This is getting interesting. Can I have the answer on the screen, please? And it is Saganmatha National Park. One by one, one after the other, you all are getting your answers right. Indeed. Saganmatha is an exceptional area with dramatic mountains, glaciers and deep valleys dominated by Mount Everest, the highest peak in the world, 8848 meters. Several rare species such as the snow leopard and the lesser panda are found in the park. The presence of the Sherpas with their unique culture adds further interest to this site. Moving further, can we have the next question on screen? My name is reputed to signify the mound of the dead and I am a group of mound and ruins on the right bank of the Indus River. The flat alluvial plain of Indus is where I lie. In 1922 is where my archaeological importance was first recognized. Who am I? A large well and bathing platforms from Harappan occupation. Archaeological ruins at Mohenjo-daro. C. Taksila. D. Buddhist ruins of Tak i Bahi and neighboring city remains at Sir I. E. Bahalul. Wow, I have already got the answers. Can we have the answer on the screen, please? It is indeed archaeological ruins at Mohenjadaro. The ruins of the youth city of Mohenjadaro, built entirely of unbaked brick in the 3rd millennium BC, lie in the Indus Valley. The Acropolis set on high embank embankments, the ramparts and the lower town, which is laid out according to the strict rules, provide evidence of an early system of town planning. Going ahead, can we have the next question on the screen, please? Established around a cutting from the Tree of Enlightenment, a Ceylonese political and religious capital, I was flourished for 1300 years and abandoned after an invasion in 19, in nine, sorry, in nine, 993 was I. Hidden away in dense jungle for many years, I am now accessible once again after years. Who am I? A. Sacred City of Kandy B. Ancient City of Sigiriya C. Sacred City of An Anuradhapura D. Old Town of Gale and its Fort Okay, wow. One after the other, you all keep answering. You all know you all are just missing by some seconds. You will need to be quick. The other one is taking away your points. That might be the reason you lose the round or you lose the competition. Can I have the right answer on the screen, please? 
and it is sacred city of Anuradhapura. This sacred city was established around a cutting from the tree of enlightenment, the Buddha's fig tree, brought there in the 3rd century BC by Sanghamitta, the founder of an order of Buddhist nuns. Anuradhapura, a Ceylonese political and religious capital that flourished for 1300 years, was abandoned after an invasion in 993. Moving forward, can we have the next question on screen? A collection of cave temples predominantly dedicated to Lord Shiva I am. Five Hindu caves and a few Buddhist tupas I comprise. A small group of two Buddhist caves with water tank fee I show near Mumbai on an island. Who am I? A. Elephanta Caves B. Elora Caves C. Bora Caves D. The Jantar Mantar Yeah, it is caves, but which caves? Is this a tricky question? Oh, wow, I am surprised the contestants felt this as a tricky question. Because these contestants, I have to say, are very smart. Is that it? Five answers. The other five contestants, come on. Buck up, it's your time. It's now or never. Can we have the answer on the screen, please? It is Elephanta Caves. The city of caves on an island in the Sea of Omen, close to Bombay, contains a collection of rock art linked to the culture of Shiva. Here, Indian art has found one of its most perfect expressions, particularly the huge high reliefs in the main cave. That was about Elephanta Caves. Just to remind you guys, that can we go to the previous answer screen please yes just to remind you guys we are done with our 10 questions which leaves us only with five questions the ones who have not gained the points please please buck up otherwise it will fall heavy on you in the coming rounds all the best can we have the next question on the screen The following temple architecture is associated with which Indian caves? It is a picture and the options are A. Pandavlini Caves B. Elephanta Caves C. Elora Caves D. Rangiri Dambula Cave Temple Okay, wow, I have answers. That's it. Okay, can we have the answer on the screen, please? It is Elora Caves. I cannot find one answer where you have answered wrong. One question where you have answered the answer wrong. Nice, good going. These 34 monasteries and temples extending over more than 2 kilometers were dug side by side in the wall of a high basalt cliff, not far for, from Aurangabad in Maharashtra. Elora, with its uninterrupted sequence of monuments dating from 8600 to 1000, brings the civilization of ancient India to life. Not only is the Elora complex a unique artistic creation and a technological exploit, but with its sanctuaries devoted to Buddhism, Hinduism and Jainism, it illustrates the spirit of tolerance that was characteristic of ancient India. That was Elora Caves for you. Going for the, can we have the next picture, please? The animals in the picture below are predominantly found in which national park? A. Kyolado National Park B. Kaziranga National Park C. Kangen Zonga National Park D. Sagarmata National Park There's two! Achha, okay, we have answers, we have answers. You will be having the answers from the options given itself. The answer is not going to be outside the option that we are giving you. Okay. This is going too good. Can we have the answer on the screen? It is Kaziranga National Park. In the heart of Assam, this park is one of the last areas in eastern India undistributed by a human presence. 
It is inhabited by the world's largest population of one-horned dinosaurs, as well as many mammals, including tigers, elephants, panthers, and bears, and thousands of and thousands of birds. Guys, just three questions left. Come on. Can we have the next question, please? Name the following site which is associated with Akbar. A. Fatehpur Sikri. B. Agra Fort. C. Red Fort Complex. D. Golconda. Come on, guys. This is an easy one. Okay. 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 Nice. Nice. Try to put the answer, the entire word together. For the participants, please try to put the. If it is Fatehpur Sikri, try to put the entire name Fatehpur Sikri together. Okay, can we have the answer on the screen, please? And it is Fatehpur Sikri. You guys are doing an excellent job. Built during the second half of the. 16th century by the emperor Akbar Fatehpur Sikri the city of victory was the capital of the Mughal empire for only some 10 years the complex of monuments and temples all in a uniform character architectural style includes one of the largest mo mosques in india the jama masjid and to the second last question for this round can we have it on the screen Identify the following site. Ru A. Ruins of Buddhist Vihara at Paharpur. B. Archaeological remains of the Bam Bamiyan Valley. C. Archaeological ruins at Mohenjadaro. D. Buddhist ruins of Takt Ibahi. Okay. Okay. That's it. Five. Six. Move your fingers faster, guys. I'm telling all this again and again. I don't want anybody. I know it's not possible that everybody wins, but I want each one. I want a close competition. You can compete with each other. I know it. I don't want an easy win. It won't be interesting to your... Okay, can we have the answer on screen, please? Buddhist and eight. The answer is Buddhist ruins of Takti Bahi. The Buddhist monastic complex of Takt e Bahi, throne of origins, was founded in the early first century. Owing to its location on the crest of a high hill, it escaped successive su successive invasions and is still exceptionally well preserved. Guys, this is the last question. It is for all those who are who are not able to score even one point in this round. This is your last chance. You have to score in this. Can we have the last question for this round on the screen? The following is the entrance of a fort in which historic city? A. Jaipur City, Rajasthan, Ambedkar Fort. B. Historic City of Agra. C. Historic City of Delhi, Red Fort. D. Historic City of Ahmedabad, Bhadra Fort. Okay. Okay. Okay, I have got the answers on screen. Okay, can we have the right answer on the screen, please? And the answer is historic city of Ahmedabad, Bhadra Fort. The walled city of Ahmedabad, founded by Sultan Ahmad Shah in the 15th century on the eastern bank of the Sabarmati River, presents a rich architectural heritage from the Sultanate period, notably the Bhadra Citadel. The walls and gates of the fourth city and numerous mosques and tombs, as well as important Hindu and Jain temples of later periods. And with this, we come to the end of the round one. Exciting, wasn't it? I'll have to say, quite enthusiastic and intelligent participants we have. After all, the enthusiasm and intelligence has to come because we have such a smart and beautiful quiz master with our, us to host the show, which is obviously me, okay? Now, now, jokes apart, 
Congratulations to all the participants who have successfully managed to open their accounts with at least one point. For all the other contestants who are still at the starting point with zero, come on, buck up guys, try harder and be faster. You have yet another chance to be in the race. Be wise, don't waste it. All the best to all the participants yet again for the forthcoming rounds. Without taking much of your time, I would now like to invite the coordinator of the event and yet another quiz master for the evening. Shomik Rahate to brief you with the rules for the next round and take the event forward. Over to you, Shomik. Namaskar, Sasyakar, Adab. I am Shomik Rahate, your next quiz master for next two rounds. So I would request Mrinmay to first give the screen sharing for round number two. But before that, I would like to tell you guys that up the ladai shuru hui hai, puri jang abhi baki hai, guys. Because now the questions will carry much more weightage. And the questions will also be getting difficult. In mind, can we have round number two on screen? So guys, welcome again to round number two of Khoj and Harsar, the semi-finals, where we get much more difficult. Next slide. So before getting into the whole round, I need to tell you guys rules and regulations again. Number one, 10 multiple choice questions will be displayed on the screen one by one. The answering format remains the same as round number one. The one who answers first and correct will get two points each question. One needs to remember that we are giving four options to the question then you have to write answers in that form only. And if you write it correctly, and if you're the first one, then you get those two points each question. Let's go ahead and understand the scope of questions in round number two. In round number two, we'll expand our scope in covering geographic, political, and historical aspects of various sites in the SARC countries. So are you guys ready now for question number one of round number two? Question number one from round number two is right here in front of you. What is Sundarban forest named after? A, royal tigers, B, sundari trees, C, both A and B and D, none of the above. We have started to get answers here. It seems like a simple question to me. Mm -hmm. Some more, some more, we need some more answers. Yes, yes, there we are. Okay, so let's have an answer now. Indeed, you guys were right. It is Sundari trees. The region where Sundari tree is found is Sundarban Delta in West Bengal. The type of forest it belongs to is mangrove forest. Sundarban Delta is formed by Ganga, Brahmaputra and Meghna River. And it is very rich in flora and fauna. Hence, it is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site shared by two nations, India and Bangladesh. This was an interesting fact about Sundarban forests, which I didn't know. Going ahead to question number two. Who built the Great Stupa at Sanchi? Option A, Shah Jahan, B, Ashoka, C, King Vikramaditya, and D, Harshavardhana. And here we have our scholars whom we are looking for in Khoja Darohar, already answering the questions. Very well, very well done, guys. Very well done. Okay, it seems like people know the answers to it. Let's go to the answer then. The answer is Ashoka. Right. Sanchi Stupa is a Buddhist complex, famous for its great stupa, on a hilltop at Sanchi town in Rezim district of the state of Madhya Pradesh, India. The Great Stupa at Sanchi is one of the oldest stone structure in India and an important monument of Indian architecture. It was originally commissioned, as we all know, by the Emperor Ashoka in 3rd century BCE. Now, exploring the historical, political and geographical aspects, we are getting ready. We are, we are all set for the next question. Let's have the next question on screen. Name the first garden tomb in the Indian subcontinent. A. Pazhasi's tomb, 
B. Sikandar Lodi's tomb. C. Tomb of Akbar the Great and D. Humayu's tomb. What is it? And the answers have started coming. Come on, I want everyone to answer. It's two points each question, guys. It's two points each. This round is actually going to make a lot of change in the end result, which we'll get after tallying round one, two, and three together. Okay, now let's have the answer for this third question. Indeed, it is Humayu's tomb. Humayu's tomb, also called as Magbara e Humayu, is the tomb of the Mughal Emperor Humayu in Delhi, India. The tomb was commissioned by Humayu's first wife and chief consort, Empress Bega Begum, also known as Haji Begum, in 1569-70, and designed by Mirak Mirza Ghiyas and his son, Sayyid Muhammad, Persian architects chosen by her. It was the first garden tomb of the Indian subcontinent and a very important Mughal structure. Let's have the next question. Let's go to some hints. Which mountain railway was built first in India? Option A, Nilgiri Mountain Railway, B, Darjeeling Himalayan Railway, C, Kalka Shimla Railway, and D, none of the above. And we have already started getting answers. Seems like you have already visited these places or what? That's so cool. Yes, yes. You're waiting for more answers. Okay, now we move to the answer. Yes, it is Darjeeling Himalayan Railway. The Darjeeling Himalayan Railway, also known as the Toy Train, is a two-feet gauge railway that runs between New Jalpaiguri and Darjeeling in the Indian state of West Bengal. Built between 1879 and 1881, it's that old, it is about 88 km long. On 2nd December 1999, UNESCO declared the Darjeeling Himalayan Railway as a World Heritage Site. Let's have the next question, please. Guys, it's for two points each. And the question goes like this. In which mountain range is the rock shelters of Bhim Betka located? Is it Windhya range, Kaimur range, Satpura range, or Maikala range? We have all the geography students getting ready with their answers there. Good going, guys. Good going. Come on. You have to think logically to come up with these answers. You might not know them actually. Very well done. We have people answering it. Nice, nice. That, that is going really nice. Let's have the answer now. So guys, Vindhya range. Many Buddhist monasteries was built during the Pala dynasty. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm missing out something. So let's let's go to the next question now. So which Pala ruler founded the illustrious Paharpur or Somapura Buddhist Vihara? A. Mahipala 1, B. Devapala, C. Dharmapala or D. Gopala? We already have people answering the question. This is the political side which we are judging over here. Okay, okay. Okay. Let's let's have the answer now. So many Buddhist monasteries were built during the Pala dynasty in the region of Bengal. According to Tibetan sources, there were five prominent Mahaviharas. Those are Vikramashila, Nalanda, Udantapuri, Jagadela, and Somapura Mahavihara. These five Mahaviharas worked as a link, and monks can move freely within these to gain different knowledge. Dharmapala, the answer which you have given of Pala dynasty built the Somapura Mahavihara. Let's have the next question. Question number seven says, which route mentioned below does not come under the juncture of three great trade routes of Takshashila? Option A, Kashmir to Central Asia, Western Asia to Takshashila, Option C, Ujjain to Southwestern Asia. India and option D, Hindustan to Eastern India. And we have already started getting answers for them. 
Mm -hmm. This is this is plain geography we need to know about. Yes. Okay, let's let's go to the answer. The answer is Ujjain to southwestern India. So the ruins of Takshashila lie on all these routes of Kashmir to Central Asia, Western Asia to Takshashila, Hindustan to Eastern India, but not on this route of Jain to Southwestern India. Well done, guys. You have been doing great. Let's move to the next question. Question number eight goes like, which type of forest is the Simraj Forest Reserve? Option A, ever green rainforest option b tropical rainforest option c semi evergreen rainforest and option d temperate conifers it's all about the forests the beauty yes we have people answering it that's going great yes yes you guys are on the track you guys are experts it seems let's go ahead with the answer so Simuraj Forest Reserve is a forest reserve and a biodiversity hotspot, hotspot as we know in Sri Lanka. It is of international significance and has been designated a Biosphere Reserve and World Heritage Site by UNESCO. And it is a tropical rainforest. Let's go to the next question. Question number nine. Chitwan National Park of Nepal is not known for the protection of a one horned rhinoceros, B, Garyal crocodile, C, swamp deer, or D, royal Bengal tiger. It's about wildlife. All those who are interested in wildlife would know this answer. Knowing the region of Chitwan National Park of Nepal, which animal is not protected here? Oh, here we have varied answers. Now it's getting interesting. Mm hmm do we have some more answers coming in? Okay, let's go to the answer. Yes, it is swamp deer. Chitwan National Park of Nepal predominantly protects one horned rhinoceros, garyal crocodile, royal Bengal tiger, but not the swamp deer. Let's go to the last question. Of this round number two, which will give you two points each question. Who began the construction of Shalimar Garden? Lahore in 1642. Was it Emperor Akbar, Emperor Shah Jahan, Emperor Humayu, or Emperor Aurangzeb? We need the full answer as they have been given in the options. Come on, guys, answer. Answer as quick as possible. You have to. You have to come on. That's great. That's great. We are going good. Yes, we have a lot of people answering it. Let's go ahead and let's display this answer. Yes, it is Emperor Shah Jahan. The gardens date from the period when the Mughal Empire was at its artistic and aesthetic zenith and are now one of Pakistan's most popular tourist destinations. The Shalimar Gardens were laid out as a Persian paradise garden intended to create a representation of an earthly utopia in which humans coexist in perfect harmony with all the elements of nature. Construction of the gardens began in 1641 during the reign of Emperor Shah Jahan, as you have answered, and was completed in 1642. And that is the end of round number two. I hope you guys have been getting charged up and buckled up for the next and the final round, which will give you the maximum points per question. But we have made sure that these questions will be much more difficult than round number one and round number two. So Minmai, without any delay, let's go to round number three. So before going to round number three, again, Let's see the rules and regulations for our finals. So guys, here are the rules and regulations. Hear them well. Rule number one. This will be a points-based round with 10 questions only. 
question one to five will be questions with no options. And the one who answers first in everyone chat box will score 10 points. The answer for these questions will be displayed after all participants have answered the question. And the answer key and the answer given by the participant has to match to gain those 10 points, the question without options. Minimal spelling mistakes here and there can be considered, but that will be decided by the team which has been scoring you through round number one, two, and three. It will be their decision and it will be final. Question number six and six to ten will be MCQs. And the one who answers first in everyone chat box will get five points for these questions. The scores of round number one, two, and three will be tallied. And first three positions will be awarded with the winning certificates and the trophies. Aren't you all excited? In case of a tie in points, five more backup questions in the same format will be ready. But I think we have a tough competition who won't let a tie to happen. So now let's go to the scope of questions. So these questions will be based on culture, art and architecture, conservation, and current affairs. So let's get ready for question number one, which will give you 10 points. Let's have question number one without option. The columns of the entrance gates to Chhatrapati Shivaji terminus are crowned by which two animal figures? Most of whom who are from Mumbai should know this answer. Come on, I'll ask you the question once again. The columns of the entrance gates to Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj terminus are crowned by which two animal figures? Oh, wow, we have our contestants already having the answers. That's great, that's great. This proves that all of you are great observers. We see history, we observe history, and this is what we wanted from you. Let's have the answer. Let, yeah. So lion and tank, tiger is indeed the right answer. So something about Chhatrapati Shivaji Terminus, CST, formerly known as Victoria Terminus, as VT, is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and a historical railway station located in the heart of Mumbai. The entrance gates to Chhatrapati Shivaji Terminus carry two columns, which are crowned one with lion, representing Great Britain, and other with tiger, representing India. So that is the reason behind having lions and tigers there. So guys, the first one to answer this correct has got 10 points and this is going to make a change. So guys, get ready for next question, which will also give you 10 points. And the question is, what is the sundial, the supreme instrument in the Jantar Mantar complex called? I repeat, what is the sundial, the supreme instrument in in the Jantar Mantar complex of Jaipur called. We have people answering here. That's so great. That's amazing. Come on, come on. We need all to answer. Yes, yes, that, that's going great. That's going great. That's what we call a very tough competition between all of us. That's great. Okay, okay. So let's have answer, Mrinlai. Yes, you guys were right. It is called as Samrat Yantra. The Samrat Yantra, sometimes called Supreme Instrument, is an equinoctial sundial of enormous proportion. proportion. It is a very big in size. The Samrat Yantra is important because it measures time to a precision that had never before been achieved. Let's have next question, please. Which British ecologist took efforts to declare the Western Ghats as an ecological hotspot in 1988? Something which is really close to us, but we are not aware of. The Western Ghats, which are UNESCO World Heritage Site. Which British ecologist took efforts to declare those Western Ghats as an ecological hotspot in 1988? We have someone who knows this answer also. That's great. That's great. That's really impressive. 
these are those minute details which will give you 10 points and give you a lead in the competition. That's great. Let's have the answer, Mirinmai. The Western Ghats region was first exploited by mass deforestation under the British government and later by illegal mining. It was declared an ecological hotspot in 1988 through the efforts of ecologist Norman Myers. He was a British ecologist who came to India and studied and made Western Ghats a UNESCO World Heritage Site. You must remember that. Let's go to the fourth question, which will also give you 10 points. Which is the largest port of India standing in the state of Rajasthan? People who have traveled to Rajasthan should definitely know this answer. Which is that largest port in India, largest in size, standing in the state of Rajasthan? Our heritage, our culture of Rajasthan. Yes, we have people started answering that question. That's great. That's great. The people who are answering a bit late should get a much more faster. Come on, you still have some scope to actually overpower this competition by winning maximum points in this round. So let's have the answer for it. You guys were right. It is Chittorgarh or Chittorgarh. The Chittor fort is the largest fort in India. The fort was the capital of Mewad and is located in the present-day town of Chittor. It sprawls over a hill of 180 meter in height, spread over an area of 691.9 acres above the plains of the valley drained by the Birash River. So that was the question which gave you 10 points. And this is the last question which will give you 10 10 points. What is the architectural style of Rani Ki Wow Stepwell in Gujarat? That's the hint, guys. Something in Gujarat. The builders of Gujarat built Rani Ki Wow Stepwell. We have answers coming. The art historians of the future already answering all, all of these beautiful questions in full force. That is the spirit. That is the spirit. Great one, guys. Great one. Let's have the answer, Mirman. So, guys, you are absolutely right. It is Maru Gurjara or Solanki or Charukyan architectural style which has been incorporated in Rani Kivao Stepwell. So, Rani Kivao is considered as the finest and one of the largest Stepwell architectures in Gujarat. It was built at the height of craftsman's ability in Stepwell construction and the Maru Gurjaran architecture style reflecting mastery of this complex technique and the beauty of detail and proportion in its sculptures. So these were the five questions which gave you 10 points but we still have questions from round number three which will give you five points each. Now we have four options again for you. So the people who couldn't answer the questions without ops from round number three you still can make the change happen. Let's have the next question. Question number six, which of the following endangered fauna species cannot be found at Sundarbans? A, Chinese pangolin, B, olive ridley turtle, C, royal Bengal tiger, D, one horned rhinoceros. We have answers coming in. All the wildlife experts again speaking about Sundarbans. What an amazing response to that question. The winner of this question will get five points, five valuable points. Let's have the answer now. So the answer is one horned rhinoceros. One horned rhinoceros is an animal predominant in the alluvial regions of Terai, Dua, Savannah and Grasslands and the riverine forests in Assam, but not in Sundarmans. That was a tricky one. Next question, please, which will give you five points. Yes, yeah. The Buddha statues and cave art in Bamiya Valley are an outstanding representation of which school of art? A. Mathura school, B. Amravati school, C. Gandhara school or D. None of the above. We have people already answering that. 
It is about joining those dots with places we know, with the school of arts we know, and then bringing together this answer. Most of them are absolutely right. Let's have the answer. And it is Gandhara School of Art. Gandhara School was based on Greek or Roman norms encapsulating foreign techniques and an alien spirit. It is also known as Greco Buddhist School of Art. The foreign influence is evident from the sculptures of Buddha in Bamiya, which they bear resemblance to the Greek sculptures. Grey sandstone is used in Gandhara School of Art. We still have three more questions to go, which will give you five points each. And here is your next question. Which religion can be associated with the heritage site of Rangiri Dambula Cave Temple in Sri Lanka? Is it Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism or none of the above? We already have answers here. It's about religion. In Rangiri Dambula Cave Temple in Sri Lanka. As we see, most of us have already answered. Let's go to the answer. Yes, it is Buddhism. Dambula is an important shrine in the Buddhist religion in Sri Lanka. Remarkable for its association with the long-standing and widespread tradition of living Buddhist ritual practices even now and pilgrimage for more than two millennia. That's how old it is. Let's go to the second last question of our quiz. Khoj hai dharo har. Ninth question, which of this is not an endangered species of Sri Lankan central highlands? A. Western purple-faced langur, B. Slender loris, C. Sri Lankan jungle fowl, or D. Sri Lankan leopard? We have people answering and those are different answers. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Sri Lankan jungle fowl or slender loris or a western purple faced langur. We have varied answers in the chat box. Come on, we are waiting for the right one. Or do we have one? Let's go and check it. Let's have the answer, please. Yes, it is Sri Lankan jungle fowl. Central highlands of Sri Lanka are home to extraordinary range of flora and fauna, including several endangered species such as the western purple fish langur, the Horton's Plains slender loris, and the Sri Lankan leopard, which is another reason why UNESCO announced it as World Heritage Site. The Sri Lankan jungle fowl is not an endangered species, but is in abundance in this forest. Let's go to the final showdown question, which will give you five points and determine the results of today. What do the historical monuments at Makli Thakta consist of? A. Tombs and graves. B. Fort complex. C. Common hall. D. Ports and the remains of old warehouses. We have people already answering it here. What an amazing contestants we have who have knowledge of not only the sites in India, but covering all the Sark nations. Let me tell you, these were 68 sites which we have covered in round number one, two, and three, and you guys have aced it. Let's go to the answer and know what's the right. It is tombs and graves. The necropolis of Makli associated with the city of Thatta is an enormous symmetry possessing half a million tombs and graves in an area of about 10 square kilometer. Once a capital and center of Islamic culture, it testifies in an outstanding manner to the civilization of Sindh from the 14th to the 18th centuries. And by this question, we come to an end to our quiz. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for participating in this wonderful quiz and making it a brilliant experience for us and even for you. But before announcing the results, we would like to keep it for some more time because suspense is always nice. So now it's time to invite a beautiful valedictory speaker, Dr. Rashmi Jeta Sir. Associate Professor History, Government Post Graduate College, Damo, Madhya Pradesh, India, to speak on Khajuraho, a cultural page of heritage. 
it is going to be a wonderful experience to hear dr jeta and then reveal the results of our quiz dr jeta the screen is yours uh thank you uh, shomik uh, am i audible first let me know yes sir yes sir you are absolutely audible okay so uh, thank you shomik for such a wonderful comparing of this quiz program i remember my school days uh when we were uh, you know uh, very much interested in quiz shows uh, it used to be uh, career competition uh, quiz shows even in delhi university uh, prior to you titiksha was there a wonderful comparer she also did her job very well uh, i heard uh, rajesh kamath ji speak so well about you know tenali ram and uh, his uh, keynote speaking was uh, pretty uh, impressive but uh, above all uh, let me thank you uh, all of you especially um, the founder director of kash foundation dr avakash jado uh, for being so so uh, you know good for organizing because you see we have this uh, virasat thing coming up all over the world but rarely uh, do people uh, take this initiative of holding such uh, programs where there is a melange of lot of programs which run through uh, the days together we have, we have symposium we have you know uh, uh, such a beautiful quiz i just watched it it was uh, wonderful to watch uh, the uh, the quiz show uh, there's some information that i did not know i gathered those information for the first time uh, it was very well research work uh, done uh we uh, you see i belong to <laughs> a place me, right now yeah uh, yes. sorry to interrupt you but i will request you to uh, request you to please switch on your camera okay my camera is on i suppose uh i have my camera on mm -hmm. is it it is not on no sir we are able to see oh i'm so sorry is it there now no sir uh but i can see myself yeah 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 now we can see you and there you are oh, okay I'm so don't so, interrupt you I'm, can continue i'm so i'm so sorry i'm so sorry so uh, once again thank you very much uh, all of you and uh, thank you very much okash jadhav for giving me this opportunity to have this valedictory speech uh, the virasat is a wonderful thing uh, especially all those who love history who love culture we have the rich cultural heritage we have the exuberance of culture there is a heritage which we call we have the heritage to teach the world also and we have you know plenty of such sites available all through the country we have people in the name of the heritage we have structures in the name of heritage uh, we have science society and culture uh, which is way way ahead of uh, you know uh, the rest of the world there is one thing which i always feel here you know i belong to a place uh, in madhya pradesh where i serve and i worked on khajuraho uh, as one of the most important world heritage sites as you all know and uh, i made a film on khajuraho which uh, received uh, some 10 to 12 international awards including some of the best known awards in india also it was a documentary uh but the thing which i always appreciate in uh, the students and teachers in you know promising historians would that be that uh, once we visit the uh, historical uh, sites the heritage sites we have always treated historical sites as you know tourism hub the heritage as a tourism hub to encourage economic gains uh we have uh, industry coming up around the place and uh, uh, this is what uh, we have been to these places but what actually is required is to make an academic rendezvous uh, a research uh, academic uh, work uh, to debate to dispel the darkness darkness of ignorance and fake history you see we have lot of uh, heritage sites uh which teaches lot of things about history and if we do not study like uh, uh, there is one beautiful question about you know uh, uh, we have the uh, two animal figures uh, the lion and the tiger uh, which were there on one of the unesco historical sites of uh, mumbai so we have to be an observer 
we have to observe things. We have to develop an alternative methodology to understand history in a different perspective altogether. You see, uh, Khajuraho's uh, rise to fame and glory as uh, world heritage is generally attributed uh, to the erotic sculptures, as you all know. Perhaps uh, nowhere in the world have the motifs been so profusely and explicitly depicted on any religious moment. The writing twisted uh, figures of love and lust of men and women, of gods and goddesses, in such diversity of poses that interviews an intellectual, you know, and thrills the world at the same time. Uh, you do not have marble studded walls out here, but you still have a lot of things to learn. Uh, you learn it when you look at the whole historical site uh, at the background, at the backdrop of a, a medieval age. Yes, the erotic art at Khajraho, the World Heritage Site, has remained an enigma to art historians and, you know, uh, other such scholars for the last 1,000 years. But no single answer could resolve the mystery. The erotic carvings and sculpted couplings are not indecent stones, as, you know, many of us put it like that, but they are coded scriptures. They are symbols of high importance which cannot be you know, lightly dismissed or condemned. This is what we have to learn to develop an alternative methodology. When we visit a historical site or a heritage site, we do not have to simply merely take pictures and, you know, be satisfied with what we have and come back home. What we have to do is a sincere study of the structure, whether you visit Elephanta or Elora or Ajanta, you know, there is a historicity behind that, and it still awaits uh, the analysis and debate that must come up to, you know, dispel the darkness of that fake history uh, that is there. We, we, we always find it on, you know, social media. We have to develop the archaeological understanding of these places. You have to develop analysis. And that is, in fact, one of the reasons that we take a tour to these places and tell people and, and even ask people, ask the students to analyze by yourself and see how your analysis works, how it is adjusted, how you can defy and deny the traditional conventional history, which was not based, whether it is, you know, archaeological sites of Indus Valley civilization or uh, the, the, the literature that is there in Vedas, the Rig Ved, Sam Ved, Yajur Ved, Athar Ved, the Aitariya, Kosipki, Shatpat, Gopat, Ayur Ved, Dhanur Ved, Dandhar Ved, Shilp Ved, Aranyak, Upanishad, Shat Darshan. We have heritage in the name of literature. We have heritage in the name of sites. But then the alternative methodology to look at it, to rediscover it, to redefine it, to re-understand it and to tell the people that this was not what you think. I, you, most of you are here as young brigades. I'll tell you that what people think about Kajraho is a site where it is full of erotic art, but it is not true. You see, eroticism is just 20% of the whole carvings that you, find, that you could find in 23 uh, uh, temples in Kajraho. Just 20%. And what about the rest 80%? Yes, woman is there everywhere. Woman has remained the most important carving of the walls of Khajraho. She has been carved everywhere as goddess, as mother, as love-making lady, as warrior, as yogi, as, 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 as if in fashion, in receiving knowledge, in, you know, sermonizing, in receiving sermons, in domestic errands, etc. Signaling at the freedom and liberty of women, even during the extreme phase of feudalism. See, it's women empowerment that we talk of, which we do not find even today. The art shows the contrast, the, the Kajraho art shows the contrast between the liberated woman of the medieval Chandelas and the exploited lady of the contemporary India. The message is sharp and clear. 
that despite all constitutional rights and economic freedom, the woman today is subject to wrath of the feudal mentality, and that art makes you ponder over this issue time and again. That, that particular sound echoing in the temples was made lively by Chandelas about 1,000 years ago, and Khajraho relies this history with stoic eyes. The sculpture here also relies the controversy and the dichotomy between sex and salvation when India in the 10th, 11th century was struggling with Turkish invasions. The Chandela sculptors were engraving a new meaning of religion and philosophy on stones, infusing breath into the reticent contours. The carvings are, on these walls are immortal. Each aspect of human life is witnessed here. Religion and sex have been partners like wheels since birth till end. Be, by being threatened by the Turkish invasions where many dynasties, you know, imprisoned and confined a woman within the four walls of the house, the Chandelas allowed them to be free and liberated. So we have a different concept altogether coming up from Khajuraho if we do not look at it from one particular age-old traditional angle. There are many more things uh, to this, but I would not like to uh, take my discussions to so far uh, on this platform right now because it's been very, very interesting, and especially that quiz competition. And, and the Youth Brigade of Aukash, uh, the way uh, you people are working, I have seen you before also in, <laughs> in many other places uh, on uh, uh, several on internet programs. Uh, it's been it's been very very encouraging for us that yes we have young brigade thinking history in their mind you know you have been uh, doing a great job but the only message here which I would like to tell is that please do not accept the age long traditional uh, the 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 paradigm of understanding things we have to question why and how and these two things are very very important as we always say that causation plays a very very important role i think that you the young brigade would take history into a new phase of uh, understanding things and would you know come out with some very very valuable uh, analysis because india is the only country uh, where uh, we do not develop uh, all these historical sites for purely tourism it is uh, part research also it is you know academic exuberance that we get we take people to these sites not to you know enjoy and you know for outings and picnics it's also to study the walls to study the text to study the museum to study the archaeological sites and uh, i i i can tell you uh, very clearly that uh, I have been closely watching Avakash taking his uh, brigade to a number of sites in and around Mumbai in Maharashtra. And he himself has visited a number of sites all around the world. And whenever he has time, he takes himself to all these sites, understands it, and definitely discusses it on uh, Internet, on Facebook and other things. This is what we have to learn. And this is what is the message from my side. This is what is my valedictory speech is all about. And thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to share this platform and to be with you all. Jai Hind, thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Dr. Rashmi Jeta, sir. Your words have actually enlightened us. The part where you spoke about questioning and then leading us to history is something which is really required in today's time and for all of us, the history students of today. So thank you, Dr. Rashmi Jeta, for sharing your beautiful experiences, immense knowledge and thoughts with us. And now I would like to invite Pamela Dhun, the core member of Kash Foundation and the volunteer of World Heritage Week to announce Khoj Hedarohar, the quiz competition. Pamela, the screen is yours. Thank you so much, Shomek. First of all, I would like to thank you and the entire quiz team for organizing such a wonderful um, quiz. I have been a part of it right from the time, from its inception, from the time where we discussed about how to go about the rounds and the questions and practicing it. So it has been a really wonderful work that you all have done. 
So all our participants are ready for the final results, and I hope Shomik and Tishar have really kept you all entertained throughout the quiz, and also they have kept the suspense, uh, suspense uh, throughout the quiz, which I would now like to play because I do not want you all to. Uh, I do not want you all to keep on sitting and being desperate. So first, I would like to start with our third prize winner. So the third prize goes to Ayush Kumar Jha, who has got twenty six points. So Ayush Kumar Jha, congratulations. The second prize goes to Ganesh Kabra with twenty nine points. So again, congratulations to Ganesh Kabra. And now we have the winner of the quiz. So. The winner of Koj Hai Darohar, an international quiz competition on the UNESCO World Heritage Sites of in Assam country, is Miss Sidhi Sunil with the most points, and she has scored forty-four points. So congratulations, Sidhi, and congratulations to all the winners as well as the participants for participating in our uh, international quiz competition. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Pamela, and thanks a lot to all of the participants who have joined us today. Now, I would like to call upon our favorite, Mr. Tiksha Kabra, once again to conclude our quiz session. Tiksha, the screen is yours. Hey, charming personality. Anyways, enough about me and my jokes. All you participants were brilliant and did an impressive job. You guys are intelligent, I must say. And since we are talking about impression and intelligence, let me quote an American writer who once said, "Let us, before we die, gather up our heritage and offer it up to our children." And what better way to do this than to organize an international conference on heritage? This quiz was indeed an informative session for our viewers and a fun learning activity for our participants, especially the youth. Congratulations to all the winners and to the participants. Don't forget, participation is more important than winning. And now, I would like to take this opportunity to propose a word of thanks on behalf of Kash Foundation. We at Kash Foundation are grateful to our collaborators: Ministry of Culture, Government of India; Department of Tourism, Government of Maharashtra; Archaeological Survey of India, Government of India. Swami Vivekanand Cultural Center, High Commission of India, Colombo, Sri Lanka, World Buddhist Mission, Japan, and Department of Archaeology and Ancient History, the Maharaja Sayaji Rao University of Baroda. We are extremely thankful to our eminent speakers for this evening, Mr. Rajesh Kamath, our keynote speaker, and Dr. Rashmi Jeta, our valedictory speaker, for sharing their knowledge with us and making this event a learning experience. We would also like to extend our heartfelt gratitude to all the participants, attendees, viewers, and well wishers, without whom this event would not be a grand success. We are extremely thank you, thankful to the founder trustee of Kash Foundation, Dr. Afkar Jadhav sir, for taking this initiative and continuously motivating us throughout the making of it. We are also grateful to Ms. Pamela Dhonde for guiding us and helping us throughout. Not forgetting, we would also like to extend our gratitude to the coordinator of this event and the quiz master, Mr. Shomik Rahate, and one of our guides, Ms. Siona Salvi. We are extremely thankful, thankful to the logistics team and the research team, which comprised of Ms. Anuja Augustin, Ms. Aishwarya Prabhune, Ms. Rachel Menis, and Ms. Subhalakshmi M. Along with the technical team, which included Ms. Farin Khalid Tai, Ms. Teresa Andrew Korea, and Ms. Sh 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 Shaina Simon Dim. Hello. Without these teams, the event would not have been possible. Now, as we embark on the sixth day of the World Heritage Week celebrations on twenty fourth November, twenty twenty, Kash Foundation's Center for Academic and Professional Development will be organizing the tenth international symposium event from four pm to seven pm. The symposium will witness the esteemed presence of the following resource persons. Dr. Mufti Mudassir, Mr. Ijaz Ahmed Wadan, Mr. Pratap S. Panikar, and Dr. S. B. Ota. We'll be going live on YouTube channel for the same. So do subscribe and stay tuned to our YouTube channel, Kash Foundation Mumbai, to get exclusive notification. 
For more information about the Heritage Week celebrations, kindly visit the Cash Foundation website www.cashfoundation.org and the CAPD website www.cashcapd.com. Also, do visit us, find us on our Instagram account cash underscore foundation underscore org, on Facebook, WordPress, and YouTube as Cash Cash Foundation Mumbai. Till then, take care and stay safe. This is Ms. Sitiksha Kabra, team member of Cash Foundation, signing off from day five of the World Heritage Week celebrations.